Hello, this is Bill Webb, aka Billy Indiana. Today I'm going to do an unboxing for this behemoth. Oh, it's Isoparian Guard by Sky Kingdom Games. It is literally a 40 pound game, my heaviest game in my collection. I don't think it's going to be so heavy compared to weight for some other games, but definitely actual mass. So if you're curious to see what comes in this giant box, stay tuned. So I've tried to show you a little bit of the box. It is really heavy, but here is the top or front cover. So you can see that really beautiful art. <laughs> Can't see me. Uh, and then the edges you've kind of seen as I spun it around. And then here you can see the back. All right. So on the back it says, Welcome to Isofar, wild land. Severe in its beauty, the Isofarian people take great pride in their ability to flourish among the hostile wildlife and cruel elements of their mountainous home. As a member of the Isofarian Guard, life is never dull. You try to keep the peace among your fellow Isofarians, a never-ending job, as well as deal with constant threats from the aggressive Falmond Empire to the south. But now the old patterns are shifting. New forces are at work that will challenge the very underpinnings of reality. You will guide eight different Isofarian guards throughout five interweaving campaigns as they deal with a power that threatens not only Isofar, but the entire world. The Isofarian Guard will travel, you will travel through the cities and wilderness of Isofar in a beautifully illustrated world map. Fight off enemies using a unique and highly customizable battle system and use your wits to talk your way out of sticky situations as you forge important alliances. Opportunities will arise for you to craft stronger gear, gain new powers, and step into the destiny you were called to. Game trays, game land, foreteller also involved in this project, and as I said, this game is by Eric Bitterman and produced by Sky Kingdom Games. So if I get this lid off, it came in a massive box, obviously, and there is an, um, a, a, a neoprene mat. <laughs> Boy, this is on there tight. So I'll have to grab the neoprene mat and let you see it. Um, but you can see the size of this cavernous box. It, it is huge. Um, so I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to be able to keep it. All right, right here on top. First time set up. You can't even see me behind this over and over again. All right, looks like there's a little bit of bend there, but hopefully that's not a big deal. Uh, first time set up. So it's got some set up instructions here. I won't read the instructions to you. It's got a link to the Stonebound Saga website for Isofarian Guard in particular. And then it says uh, immersive experience, best experience with audio narration over 150. Or sorry, over 15 hours of immersive audio, over 70 professional voice actors. Amplify your adventure today. It's got a little uh, picture and QR code there. Uh, I wanted to show you before I go to the top-down view kind of how this is organized in the box. So uh, there's different pieces. We'll just kind of pull them out one by one, and then we can look at them from top down in a minute. So there's a, a little bit of a foam there, I think, just for protection. And then there's two trays um, that are for the different characters. And like I said, we'll we'll look at these in detail in the top down here in a minute. Just want you to kind of see how things fit together. A little desiccant tab in there as well. Maps. <laughs> Good, this is heavy. <laughs> uh, maps, enemy dashboards, and miscellanea. So it's just this giant box here. Again, we'll open it up the top down view. And then we've got Books of Isofar, also really heavy. And uh, again, really cool the way they've designed it all to look like books. Set off, it says there's fabric bags, rule books, reference guide, player aid, index book, quest book, campaign book, all of that in there. And then over here we've got field events and enemies. Every box just feels so heavy. <laughs> and this one says volume one on the top there and it says field event cards enemy cards enemy ai cards guard ability cards stone bound ability cards and so again everything just looks kind of like i'm gonna uh like books i'm gonna have to see if i can remember how to put this back in there materials of isofar a smaller box and then we've got some foam just for protection it looks like and we've got field events enemies and abilities volume two this one feels empty i think it's just if you sleeve maybe to fill out everything. 
And then again to chip theory games, these really nice chips. Again, we'll check all of them out in the overhead in a minute. And then another box of chips. And then back, the miniatures. All right, so now that we've kind of seen what comes in this massive box, let's break down all these details in the overhead. Well, I'm not exactly sure where to start. There's so much to look at and uh, so many big pieces. Maybe let's just begin with the miniatures. And so this box doesn't look like a book. It's just a box that says miniatures on the top and miniatures on the side. And it's one of the lighter boxes. And there they are, nicely packaged. And I believe that, if I remember correctly, yeah, it looks like they all come with kind of two characters attached. Pretty cool. I am not a miniatures painter, although these would look really cool painted. Well, maybe I should see if there's someone that would want to paint those for me. They look really cool. Well, this one just has one image, one character. Not if he's a bad guy or a good guy. <laughs> Make sure that's in there, right? Ooh, this one's a little loose. Oh, I think it just pops on there, though. Maybe it looks like they all might pop on and off. Maybe that maybe you're supposed to be able to mix and match them. I could be. I don't remember that being a feature, but maybe it is, and I've just forgotten. Yeah, try to figure out how to. I don't want to put these in in a way that's going to damage them. I, for, I should be paying attention to how I pull them out. But yeah, really cool character looking pieces. This one was in there kind of like that. <laughs> remember, grab there we go. I remember grabbing the handle. There we go. I think that's it. So those are the miniatures. Now they don't have huge impact on gameplay. In fact. Uh, I believe you can use just some tiles to move around on the map instead of the actual miniatures if you prefer. Uh, let's take a look at these chips. And these dudes are heavy. Now, I've never played a chip theory game to know how their chips compare. But these, I, I mean, I, I have played with um, iron clays before in different games. And I have some poker chips from Dice Tower, or not from Dice Tower West, from... Uh, from World Series of Board Gaming, actually, wearing my World Series of Board Gaming shirt tonight, or today. Um, but the, yeah, these are heavy-duty chips. And these look like health markers. They've got hearts on them. Real heavy purple ones. And I assume it's for the different characters. It's been a while since I've looked into it, but they all have different markings on them for different features of the game, I'm guessing. I remember there are some that are like shields. That looks like some sort of magic symbol there. I know there's some shields and then there's this looks like a potion. There's some swords, there's skulls, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, I'll have to dig through the rules. We won't go through everyone. There's one with a sword and a shield on it. So yeah, and there's some red ones here. Maybe see a little bit better the color if I pull them out. They're all wrapped. So those are all red and purple in that block. And then these also equally heavy. These are all black colored. There's some books and swords. These all have like black chips. There's some character images. And then these are all green. And looks like swords and I don't know what those wings are, but here's some more of the heart ones, the health ones, and then the shields. So again, I, I don't recall what all the different symbols mean in the game, but those chips are really heavy, and I don't know if you can see this real well on the camera, but it says Isofarian Guard there, kind of etched into the top. That's pretty cool. Alright, so it goes off to the side. Let's check out this Materials of Isofar. Accessory cards, armor cards, enemy drop cards, harvesting cards, item cards, mining cards, speaking stone cards, and weapon cards. So these are all small style cards, and uh, I don't want to go through these because there could be some spoilers. I do think they're all organized as well. So, but these little square ones, I think they're different item cards that you might discover through the game. Looks like some different potions. Um, and so that's those. And then I believe this is just the sorting things that go kind of in between to keep them organized. So I haven't decided if I'm gonna sleeve this or not. I don't think there's a ton of shuffling. So probably won't. 
This field of ends, enemies, and abilities just feels like it is empty. <laughs> Hard to get open, though. There we go. Oh, it looks like it was a little bit damaged there in shipment. A little bit smashed on the corner there, unfortunately. A little bit bent on this corner. I think this is just to give it some stability. It's got a nice plastic insert there of some sort until I decide how I'm going to sort these and again whether I'm going to try to um, leave all these cards. Yeah, I'll bet it. This one probably needs to be on top because it looks like it was on bottom and got a little bit smashed. So I'll have to think about that when we go back in. That's volume two. Here's volume one. This one's real heavy and I'm wondering if this one was on top and maybe that's why it got smashed. Field event cards, enemy cards, enemy AI cards, guard ability cards, stone bound ability cards, bunches of cards here. And then I think these are the separators that go in, although there's more than there are probably separators. This would say front and back. Although I do remember there being like separators to divide everything out. So I'm going to have to go through and figure out how that all separates, how those all organize. The books of Isofar. All right. We've got books and bags. So we've got this black bag. Looks like it's got kind of a round bottom there to just sit on the table once there's chips in there to hold it upright. And there's a blue one as well. And a gray one. I think maybe one for like the enemy bag and one or events and then one for the character to play. And then what is this here? It's like just maybe a little cheat sheet kind of a thing. And then we've got rule book. We've got reference guide. We've got campaign one, and it looks like so. This is campaign one, and it looks like they're just going to be all the campaigns for campaign two, three, four, and five. There's indices and quests. So lots of books in here. Um, let's see, I don't know if I want to take the time to put everything back, although I don't have a lot of room on the table, so maybe I need to. Alright, so those are the books of Isofar. Oh, these bags go in there too. And other than that one box, everything seems to have held up pretty well. And then we've got maps, enemy dashboards, and miscellanea. So here we've got the game board, and I do have the neoprene board that can be used in place of this. And I think in one of those books, there's an even smaller version of the board that can be used if you have limited table space, which is kind of nice because so many of these games these days are, are so large, and the, this is smaller than the neoprene mat, um, that they are hard to get to the table unless you have a massive gaming table, which I don't. Uh, so there's the top of the map. You can see the mountains of Isofar, and then if we slide up the plains, and there's all these routes along for you to investigate, and all these little circles are nodes. And I did watch a video this morning, just on a quick overview. I think these blue ones, the blue nodes, you have to have boats. The red ones, you can't go through until the storyline opens them up for you. The green ones are sort of like free areas. The yellow ones, I think, are ones where events are going to take place. And then when you go into these places like Razdor and Silni and Fort Straz, there's other maps in the books that open up for more detail. Now this is double-sided, and so I think this is, I don't know exactly where in the story this one comes up, um, but we've got some sort of underground looking, <laughs> uh, well it's maybe not fully underground because this top corner there looks lit. Oh, there's maybe light coming through. Yeah, interesting. So I don't know where in the story this comes out. Uh, but you can see there's like almost a volcano down here in the bottom corner. But yeah, very massive board. And neoprene mat. I think, I don't know that I'll bother to bring that out since it's going to be the same, just a neoprene version. And then here we've got some desiccant. And then I think these are the boards for the enemies you're going to come across. Nice dual layered boards to put... I think these are the action tokens, and then health, and battle, and shield, like I think attack, and defense, and health, and then all, everything's dual layered, so cards, and cubes, and everything fit down in there. And I think, yeah, it's level 1, level 2, level 3, and level 4, if I'm not mistaken. 
And then, okay, maybe it's uh, here are those maps I was referring to. I was thinking they were going to be within some of the books. It looks like they're in the map. So here is a map of Mir, or in the inside here, a map of Mir and Stropa. And then here is Ribba and Razdor. And then we've got Silni and Fort Straz. We've got the Ice Caves and Frozen Wastes. Occupied Razdor and Forgotten Tower. Oh, and here's uh, the Lux Essence Wheel for tracking your Lux. And then Vuno, Vuno, Circle of Seers. So those maps are in there. And then this one looks interesting. It's got these little, this is Fort Istra, and it's got these little pop-outs. Um, I don't want to reveal what's on the other side in case that's critical to the story. Uh, so it's kind of like Advent Calendar or Adventures of Robin Hood. Oh, that doesn't want to fit back in very nicely. It's a little snug. Uh, so yeah, these things pop out and I think reveal something as you go more and more through the story. So yeah, I don't think I'll reveal that to myself or to you at this point. And then Temple of Vual on the back. All right. And then we've got these. I don't know if these have much player function, but there's Yana, Pavel, Catherine, Yori, Dunamis. And then we've got Vera and Karzin. All right, and then here's the other scoring one. So this is for Sill. I think this is the currency. It's a little scoring wheel. They seem to be a little loose. I need to see if I can snug those down so they don't actually turn when they're not supposed to. And then Lux, which is sort of the, I think, kind of your magical ability. And then here are some nice game trades. Looks like for your health trackers and shield and Lux and maybe attack power and defense power kind of thing. I don't remember what all the colors are. And then here are some more of this game tray with different colors. And I think these are the little gems for the different speaking stones that get discovered. So those go there. Looks like these are supposed to go here. Um, I don't think I'll take the time to, again, go through and figure out how everything fits. So let me just stack those in briefly. Move that out of the way. <laughs> Running out of room for sure. Okay, let's put that over here. All right, and then last we've got the player boards, some kind of little desiccant here. Move this out of the way. And so this is the player board for Alex. So I think those characters you put in these player boards, and it's got a nice cover on it. So when you're storing it for the end of the round, so here's Alec goes in here, but then we can put these, those other characters in, I guess. So that's, I think, where those pieces fit. And then this board will come out, so you'll be able to kind of mark where you're at in terms of your health and your attack and defense. And then on this part, I think these are kind of items you have in storage, and this is where you track your actions. And then these are the different weapons you have and the different um, armor that you have and then different potions or other items that you might have that are active and then kind of in your backpack. Um, and then the other side is just plain. And like I said, you can put the character in because you will be changing characters throughout the game. And then here is sort of the player board for putting in your different action cards, I believe. And there's little, everything's dual layer here and here. And so your different cards go in this place. And then I think the little speaking stones go here. Not sure what goes in these places, I don't recall. Um, and so nice, everything fits nicely down into here. So that uh, when you're done with the gameplay, you can just kind of put everything back in, seal it up. Oh, do I not have it quite? There we go. Quite in position. Seal it up and that these are all raised so the cubes can even stay there and keep track of your score. And then this one's for Grigory. I think Grigory is who you start with at the very beginning by himself to learn the beginning of the story. And then I think he meets Alec along the way from the little bit that I've heard and read. Uh, so same kind of design, same design underneath. Uh, there is some texture underneath here too. I'm not exactly sure why there's depth or layers here. Maybe there's storing things underneath uh, and then maybe storing some things here too. 
I don't recall. If, I guess maybe you have some cards that you're not currently using that could be stored underneath that maybe you possess but you're not keeping or part of the game flow and then the ones that are active here perhaps. Uh, like I said, I haven't played this yet, just received it. So uh, we'll figure all of that out as we go. But there we go. That are Those are all of the components and bits and pieces, the chips and cards and everything that come with Isofarian Guard. So hopefully you enjoyed seeing all the bits and pieces. I'm going to have to try to figure out how to put this all back into its box. Um, but if you enjoyed the video, I'd love it if you give it a thumbs up down below. And it'd be terrific if you choose to subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions for me, leave those in the comments below this video. And as always, thanks for watching. This is Billy Indiana, signing off. Huh.